unless you want to take a deep breath through your fucking forehead, I suggest you reconsider. Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack, and we also have Calvin Ellis, ready to rock. So the Deadpool and Wolverine new trailer came out. It's going to be out in July 26, and this trailer has some more interaction between Deadpool and Wolverine. Any first, any words you want to say before I hit, it, hit play? No, let's, let's see what they got for us. Okay. I told you, you're not welcome here. You're not welcome anywhere. Now get the fuck out of my bar. Just give me one more drink and then I'll leave. Hi, Peanut. I'm gonna need you to come with me right now. Look, lady, I'm not interested. All right, well, I'm sort of on the tick tick, so upsy daisy. Oh, whiskey dick of the claws. It's quite common in Wolverines over 40. You don't want this. Unless you want to take a deep breath through your fucking forehead, I suggest you reconsider. I'm about to lose everything that I've ever cared about. Not my fucking problem. Is that what you said when your world went to shit? Come again. This Wolverine let down his entire world. Want to talk about what's haunting you, or should we wait for a third act flashback? Uh, go fuck yourself. Trust me, kid, I'm no hero. You were an X-Man. You were the X-Man. I am soaking wet right now. Boys are so silly. This is what I'm talking about. Like Big slow motion action sequence. Like Who knows if you live or die? Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Wanna do some cocaine? Hey. The one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching powder? They know all the slang terms. They have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupter? Even forest bump. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! But I can't. So, um, what do you say? Oh, well, when does this movie come out again? July 26th. July? Yeah. I'm at the point where they have released enough trailers and there are no more appetizers necessary. It's time to get to the main entree. So it, it it's not something that makes me want to see it any more or less. It's, you know, entertaining for what they've done in terms of trying to stoke interest. But for me as a viewer, I'm already there. You just need to, you just need to get me to the movie at this point. Okay. Um, one of the things that I first struggle with, and I keep bringing this up, <coughs> because um, even though the TVA, Will Simonson introduced the TVA, and we see more of the TVA in the first trailer, not this one. This one just kind of lets you know this is a buddy film, and there's a lot of action going on. But one of the things that they kind of are playing with is um, going, well, I guess it's Deadpool, as far as the first time I kind of seen this breaking the fourth wall this much in comics, which was extremist in the She-Hulk, but they are obviously going like 
that far because here we got the 20th century fox logo in here and <clears throat> somehow this is going to relate to his earth but at the same time you're doing the tva and you're breaking the fourth wall when you don't need the tva if you're just going to break the fourth wall but i guess that's kind of what he did at the end of um what was it uh at the end of Deadpool 2, I guess it was, or Deadpool 1, where you just go through all the flashback and he destroys all the stuff. One of the things that you got to remember with this sort of stuff is that, um, the, well, going back to the original TVA, they had no interest in the main Marvel storyline, the storyline we were reading. They felt that we had jumped time too much and they wanted to destroy it. And that was almost a testament from Walter Simonson doing the end joke on Marvel of the time because, you know, Mark Grunwald was the lead guy in the TVA and there's a gag in Marvel is that all the people that were, you know, from the 80s that knew each other, as they said, the scary part in Marvel when you go in and you don't recognize the faces and, and Walter Simpson had all these faceless people, a desk, <laughs> and they're trying to so, so there was a lot of in-jokes in the idea of the TVA, but they never were interested in fixing our timeline. They were interested in getting rid of it. So it's kind of a plot device for Marvel or Feige to say, hey, we're going to use all this stuff and break the fourth wall. But do you need to break the fourth wall when you're using time travel? It's kind of kind of nuts. But this, the camaraderie and the fighting looks like it's going to be fun. There's something else that I wanted to point out here. And there was in here that I wanted to talk about. Where is it? Not that, not this. Oh, when he says that Wolverine was the X Men. And I know he became that for a lot of fans, but <clears throat> he just a, ste a scene stealer. And he wasn't a scene stealer when he first started. You know, he became a scene stealer when Claremont and Byrne were kind of, well, Byrne kind of didn't allow them to get rid of Wolverine. And then the two of them decided to keep trying to one up each other. So Byrne at first, of course, said you can't you know you can't give it the only Canadian character and then soon after he immediately said Claremont said I want to do a scene where Wolverine walks up to a, a deer not to hunt not to, to not to kill it just to get near and see how close I can touch and then the two of them just started up in the ante and the same thing happened art wise when they saw a Perez cover with Wolverine who was close to his face then Terry and Terry and um what was it Terry and Byrne were trying to get to see the, the, the hair, you know, the body hair outside of his costume, but the Marvel people kept saying no. And then the two of them saw the Perez cover and they said, they did not correct that? That means <laughs> we could do what we want. And it just kept adding more. So Byrne would add some and Terry would add even more. So you see this when they're fighting the Hellfire Club and he has his shirt off, he just full blown, totally hairy. So to be more animalistic. So. It's one of the characters who was just a scene stealer, but I get it for the fans. They kind of, and, and for Deadpool, he probably would say that, something like that. But um, the thing I wanted to talk about with more than those two things is, I know I'm pretty, I am praying this character here is not Cassandra Nova. You know, you know that character, right? You mean Grant Morrison's uh, brainchild? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Grant was kind of taking the X-Men. Oh, here we go. We got a picture of the character. It's obviously female um, or seemingly female. <laughs> Cassandra Nova was Professor Xavier's evil twin sister, even though he already had an evil tw tw uh, stepbrother. So it felt like um, Grant Morris was kind of up in the ante with the um, the X cliches. He did a Phoenix thing, Wolverine and Jean profess their love for each other. There's another triangle. There's a, a big reveal with Exxon. So he kind of took all the cliches 
and he instead of most people trying to take cliches and do a 180 on them he took them and he just upped the ante as much as he could like he even did a silent story where the two of them xavier and cassandra in the womb together fighting he was like good lord <laughs> but um i wasn't really a fan i was as you can hear i was uh, really not a fan of this character and i felt like at that point he was being professed as the most imaginative um, comic writer and it really felt like hey i'm on this title like i need to do all the classic cliches but how i would do them so what do you what are your thoughts on um, on grant morrison's run no not the run no, just using this character you can talk about the run but make sure you get to them using this character in the story well if we're talking about grant morrison's run I'm already not a big X-Men fan. I don't read a lot of the stuff, and I'll dive in if I if necessary. <laughs> and a lot of the stuff I know through osmosis. But this was one of the few storylines, okay, few storylines that I tried to avoid because I hated the designs. Mm -hmm. And above all, I did not like the introduction of Professor, a uh, Professor Xavier having a sister from out of nowhere. That, for me, was very – that wasn't even comic booky. That was more soap opery. Where, you know, what, you know, and not only, she, she's not just a sister, twin sister, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. but those, between yeah. those outfits, between the outfits that made Wolverine look like he was on his way to some, you know, uh, to some sadomasochistic gay bar. And he, uh, oh, like, they were like firemen with no helmet, with no hats. Oh, I mean, the all leather, the all leather, the, the all leather part, lips. yeah. And the zipper all the way, the zipper down. I was just like, oh my goodness. And I was like, okay, I see what he's going. I see what he's going for because Morrison likes to push the envelope and quietly will do it with him. He's like, where are we going, Frank? <laughs> where are we? Where are we going? But uh, Cassandra Nova for me, it. This is where you don't really have anything to say about Professor Xavier. It's sort of like when they have a character and they give the character like not, not just a pet, but they give him a dog, mm -hmm. and the dog has more, and the dog has more charisma than the actual character. Uh -huh. What they're saying is this character doesn't have any charisma. There's nothing really good about this character, but the dog, <laughs> you know, all the stuff that the character should be doing, the dog is doing. Once you decide to give this guy a twin, you're saying that there's something, literally, the point is like his other half, right? So there's yeah. something deficient, there's something deficient about this character, but I can work through it with, with this one. And then two, where uh, if you go by what Deadpool is saying, was like, oh, X-Men, you know, Wolverine, you were the excellence. Like, no, that's Charles Xavier. I will always give that to Charles Xavier. Okay, the only other person I might say that to is, is uh, Cyclops. Yeah. But no, that's Charles Xavier. And when you come in, I mean, they already have a problem with Charles Xavier in, in other media because they quickly realize his ability, his mental ability is such that there really doesn't need to be any fight. He can pretty much shut everybody down if necessary. Yeah. The moment he does that scene where he's able to, the entire room is still, and he, that means he's shut everybody's minds off, everybody's frozen, he can do that type of, they're like, okay, so why didn't you just do that all the time? So they already have a problem in terms of Charles Xavier out and with uh, outside <laughs> media. And the comic, is, you know, of course, it's a little bit different. But in that story, but in that story to bring in her, I was like, no, because you're trying to undercut, one, you're trying to undercut his thing. And then two, you're still reminding people that you have an issue with addressing this character's abilities and showing us why, you know, these are cool abilities. He's able to he's able to do it, okay. And it's not an and it's not a problem. When you bring her in there, you bring her in there to like oh, it's always going to be the, uh, the the same trophy. Hey, I can do your thing better than you. You know, anything yeah. you can do, I can do better. So he'll come in and you know do that sort of stuff. Maybe Charles will come out on top later. Maybe not. I mean, you saw what was it? Uh, X Men Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where Charles is fighting Apocalypse and it's on his level, it's in his mind, and Apocalypse is still kicking his ass. That type of nonsense. <laughs> that yeah. type of nonsense. You are not supposed to be more powerful than Charles Xavier in Charles Xavier's own mind. That's not supposed to be happening. But you know, they come. You know, they they have a problem with mm -hmm. him being as powerful as he is, and so they look to undercut it at every other at every other chance without showing us why his abilities are cool and why he's a, a capable character with these abilities. So that was something that really turned me off to the, the, the designs and that particular introduction of the character turned me off to, uh, turned me off to this particular run of X-Men. But that was good for me because I didn't really want to read it anyway. 
Well, um, I was just talking to someone. This isn't related to that. I was just talking to someone about um, the Morrison because he was a fan of it, and I was like, you know, flipping out. <laughs> but I was, I remembered. This is in not really defense, but why you know they gave him the keys to the car is that Chris Claremont came back to the X Men his first time back, and it was disastrous as far as sales and um, the stories. So it was kind of like <clears throat> at the point they were trying to figure out what to do. I mean, they even because the burn was still with Marvel at that time, and they were like. Can you take one of the titles and then can you work with Chris on one of the other titles to, to help him get it right and burn at that point? It's like, no way I'm getting stuck in the in the in the present day X-Men. And then soon after Quesada got there, and he did you know outside of they had Mark Miller doing uh what's the thing, uh, Ultimates, you know, you might as well just, you know, get the top guy. He was a top guy coming off of um <clears throat> coming off of JLA, but JLA was almost as straight, straight for him, as straight as he could be as far as the superhero writer. And I thought we might get that. I knew that it, we could get the, you know, the on the edge Morrison, which was what we did. I just didn't think he was going to take every cliche and kind of up the ante to kind of really do X-Men cliches of, you know, like you already got away with, you know, Havoc being the brother that we never heard of, but then we got now Xavier has not only a brother but a sister. So it's kind of I get why they did it because he was the top guy and he did bring some energy. I think Joe Casey had the other title, but um, you know Jeff Loeb would kind of torch that title. He was like over here. We're doing. We just had a whole uh, interplanetary battle. At our world's at war, and then in the X Men they're fighting a the guy with a flamethrower. <laughs> Dang, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff is the one who said said to Miller, don't attack Jim Lee and these other guys. Call him on the phone. And he's like, now he's just torching Joe, Joe Casey's side. He didn't torch the other side. He just mentioned the story. And I was just like, wow, he really went at Joe Casey's X-Men. But, you know, it was, uh, you know, probably get X-Men and number with Morrison on there. But <clears throat> it's not a character that people came back to. It's like characters like. Well, and that's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, but just like a character like her, Vulcan, like these characters that the, only the writer who created them want to use them. And the, the cool thing about the X-Men was you look at the X-Men and all of the characters that were created, co-created with Chris Claremont, which is what fueled the X-Men of all these different, even if sometimes they were almost the same as the ones before, they had a lot of villains that you could go through. You can see the cartoon they're playing with having so many villains to play with. You know, they just introduced a new one that was in like late in the Scott Lovedell run. But using um, this character, if it's that character, but who else could it be? Because it feels like anyone that's, that they can kind of make sure that they have copyright over, they're using. So this could, feels like it could only be Cassandra Nova. So, um, but it was- uh, it Make, really Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, why not? Okay, because uh, you they only I mean, that's one of the reasons why we've been getting all those these awful Spider Man related movies from uh, Sony, because <laughs> we only have access to these characters. Okay, so let's at least try to get them out. <laughs> so if anybody tries to do something later on, like, no, 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 <laughs> that you know, the, that's us. You know, the, slant, gonna... the slant of your commentary is biting. <laughs> yes. oh. No, that's us. You, gotta give us, you, got, you, you can't do that. You got to give us money. <laughs> but um yeah so I, I would um it looks like it's gonna be fun i'm just not really with cassandra nova they're making something out of this um giant man ant-man thing but i don't think there should be anyone's can i see anything or oh, i guess it's a zazel that's there um well man wait a second are we getting lady death strike they can't up they can't make lady death strike any better than she was in x2 but We'll see. Like that's you need a like the movie. You need a whole movie with Lady Deathstrike. But same time, I will say, I wish they kind of went with a brown outfit and um, without all these bells and whistles on this something seemingly like the uh, the older outfit. But what can you do? They you know Josh Whedon said yellow spandex. 
So they got to do something as close to it as possible. So people say, see, it's yellow spandex. It didn't look good. And like, no helmet, because, well, you're paying money for a Hugh Jackman. You want to see his face. And uh, my last, my not, last point, my last point is not, hmm? not me. You can not me. I don't care about Hugh, Hugh Jackman's face. <laughs> I've seen his face already. You can put him in the suit. I really would rather just see Wolverine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, the thing is, one thing I didn't know with Logan, the movie Logan, I didn't know the bit with Xavier came from the cartoon that one of the one of the villains tapped into Xavier's power, similarly like X2, but had him basically mess up everyone in the UN. And I was like, okay, so they took that idea and maybe they were going to connect it, but then like, no, it'd be better if Xavier just got senile and his powers went crazy and killed a ton of people. And it was that was the hardest part of, you know, Xavier's dream being in the back of a, a Cadillac, you know, with Wolverine driving. That must have been the saddest even though I never really thought of Xavier's, um, what Xavier doing as a dream, that's what it kind of became. Xavier was just out there, you know, protecting humans against evil mutants and or any other character that would come out and mess up. They were just superheroes. But this thing of having a dream, the dream was he was secretly training them so they could use their powers and or leave the X-Men, which Gene did early and not early, but I guess around issue 30 something or something like that leave the team and be able to function in some society without having to worry about their powers going haywire you know yeah That's, exactly that yeah and then uh you know we get the other part with you know magneto was like hey i'm going to train you guys to use your powers <laughs> so we could take over the world he's like hey look i can show you you know it was very quid pro quo at least in those early days it was like look you know give me some funding i'll train these guys we will police our, we'll police our own I'm going to teach these guys to not, you know, so their powers are not going to be a problem, even though we live in a world where other people have powers, but we're going to make certain that the mutant powers are not a problem. We're also going to police our own to make sure we keep these guys over here in check and we're going to establish good relationships and it'll be fine. The, I don't know, the Xavier's dream thing, I never had, I just thought that was pretty much where you're going to go logically with this if it continues on for the amount of time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, in in those early days, it wasn't like, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, create a world where, you know, mutants and uh, people are going to live together because, again, mutants are such a small group of the worldwide population. Worldwide yeah. population. Nothing like later on where, you, you know, even like, you can't tell me, I mean, where they literally had to have uh, Wanda come out and say no more mutants because there were just so many of them. You know, yeah. even in, because what, what you would have to, I think what the average person would have to understand is when you looked at the number of mutants and then you looked at the number of, say, superheroes all together, that the mutants were a sizable number, you know, maybe as much as 50% of the overall Marvel Universe superheroes, like the active ones. So you're like, okay, how can these guys say that they're a minority, you know, that's, you know, hated and feared? You, you guys have pretty much got plurality at this point. So in those, but in those days, it was a very, very, you know, very, very small, it was a really small group. And you know, we didn't have, with the exception of maybe like Toad, who was the only one who looked like, Something was wrong with him. Like, yeah, hey, what's wrong with this dude? He's a mutant. Everybody else looked normal. It was just that they didn't know how to control their powers per se. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I think um, the idea that you know what it be, kind of became was you know the mutants were mutants because their parents worked in the nuclear program or near the program or a nuclear cost cluster type thing. But it was a it wasn't like you know you become you know, something that became sort of later, trying to have some that were kind of misshapen, but that's what kind of led people to believe that, you know, oh, look at these 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 four white people running around, like, and they, they're acting like they have it hard. It's like, well, if you're Cyclops and your powers are always on, and people are, you know how people are, like when they grab your hat, and you got, if you walk around with shades all the time, someone will like, yo, take those shades off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what would happen to Cyclops you having to worry about someone deciding that, hey, you're indoors. What are you doing with these shades on? And, you know, at the same time, like with the originals, whenever they, except for Angel, Angel just started helping people at the same time. But the rest of them, when they used their powers, people started flipping out. Like they would be like a human in their midst, which was different from 
when they saw the X-Men, they were like, hey, these X-Men, these guys are cool. But when they saw a human around there, it was a, a holdover from the 50s and 60s, early 60s, where it'd be like a mutant in our midst. Oh my God, we got to, we, we can't, we're going to kill these guys. That's just, but it's a, uh, the, the thing is, and I know post, you know, because, you know, as, you know, Martin Luther King became a bigger deal, then they like, Dr- a dream. Oh, this is what, they, like, no, that's, <laughs> we don't even know if they had, you know, what Stan or, you know, Stan or Jack were thinking at that time. And no, they, they, they weren't, they weren't thinking that. They were not they, thinking that. I can tell you that much. They were not yeah. thinking that. That's <laughs> what they immediately say. This is what they're trying to go. There's no chance. And there's no chance they were looking at, um, that's what like someone called. No, but do you know how ridiculous that is? Because that means these guys were actually looking at a figure like Malcolm X and saying he's evil. Well, there's that, that's, well, that's the other thing. That's the thing that, you know, the other part is whatever thing that the fans liked, you know, if they came up to him in public, he was okay with the same if the fans came up to him when he agreed, they said, hey, we're going to, the book is Spider-Man. Stan Lee, hmm? Stan Lee or Jack, or, uh, Stan Lee or uh, Chris Claremont? Oh, no, Stan Lee, because Stan Lee, people started talking to him, like, hey, you tried to do Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And he's like, yeah, you know that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. stupid time. Yeah. And so it's like, but is that in the same instance with uh, Gwen Stacy, where he approved them killing Gwen Stacy? And they said, hey, we need to shake up the book. He's like, yeah, you know, you guys are running it. Do what you want. And the next thing you know, he's somewhere. And he's like, how could you let them kill Gwen? Like, no, it's not. They're going to do a story where we explain the whole thing. You call him up. You guys got to explain the whole thing. Why did you kill her? It's like, Stan, you gave us approval. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I would never have done that. Why would I do that, Stan? Like, <laughs> but the thing, I mean, with the... Hey, did you tell me, Stan, did you approve this? You know I didn't approve it. I hope they burn it out. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, with going back to this, I mean, the other two, I think Deadpool was going... A, could go stick with the Deadpool stuff. I understand you want to cash out and Marvel needs a cash out with Wolverine. Uh, but at the same time, they only got, I think they're supposed to do like six projects with Hugh Jackman, but now they're only doing two. So it's kind of, things are falling apart. Oh, they were going to do six more projects with Hugh Jackman as Wolverine? Yes, they had six things planned. And then- Is that including- is that including Logan, or this is things after that? It's- he was. It was going to be after the Secret Wars. They're going to be. Oh, forget that. He's not doing. For the not things, doing but that. now they're you know like what they do. They got him. To, they got him in the suit. Now they're changing the they're changing the program, and he's like, I I'm signed up for these two, and that's it. So um, you know, at the same time, he, he probably- he's not. He's not going to do all. He's not going to do all that. Hugh Jackman wants to do musical theater. He's not doing that. <laughs> but he was. That's the thing. He was in. But at the same time, they're you know they're changing. Yeah, because, the, be, because they're going to make it. I know they're going to make it difficult for him yeah. because he already was on record saying, "Look, I'm older now. It's not easy doing these you know workouts. It's one thing if he liked doing those type of workouts to stay in shape and that type of stuff. If he wants that certain look. But that's a look that you're going for for the movie, and you can only have that look. Most people don't realize this. You can only maintain that look for a few days at best. Mm-hmm. It's just a few days at best. So you're doing all of this work, this dieting, this exercising, sleep, regimented stuff, so you can get a certain look for shooting for a few days. So you got that grueling thing. And then, of course, the shooting is going to be grueling because they only really got you for a few days. So they're going to, okay, we got to do this. And then, you know, the guy's like, hey, let's see how many takes we can get out of him. You know, be, you know, before you know, before he just totally collapses. So you do that a few times. You're like, I want to keep doing this. Okay, we want to do six more things. All right, here's some things. I don't want to have to take my shirt off. I don't mind just showing the arms, but I don't want to take my shirt off. I don't have to do all this other type of stuff. Okay, fine. And then they come over. Okay, we're gonna get you in the costume again. Get shirt off. He's like, all right, you got two, and that's it. He's like, you know, forget this. I'm not gonna die. <laughs> I'm not gonna be the guy who died on set playing Wolverine. <laughs> forget this. I was like, no. He's like, I've, you know, like I've done this already. He's like, you know, I can keep playing Wolverine, or I can go over here. <laughs> He's like, I can keep, keep playing Wolverine, or I can go over here and do some musical theater. Australia. <laughs> yeah, this, this, yeah, this is this is easier. I'm gonna do this. Forget, you know, forget the you guys. You guys don't know what you you guys don't know what you're missing. You had a good thing and you threw it out. 
Why can't I do? I'll be, he'd be the first one. Can I do some musical theater as Wolverine? Can I do some singing? Can we do a musical episode? Nah, I don't think the uh, I don't think the readership would be appreciative of that. Even though you have a great voice, we know. Okay, so you only get two. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you could have had six if you yeah. let me sing. Now you get two. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. This is well. <laughs> I don't know if I can keep a straight face saying this. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change my estimation that this is Cassandra Nova. And I don't think Marvel immediately, you know, put a, you know, the, well, I'm going to say this is a puppet master. You know what? I'm going, I like that better. I like that better than Cassandra Nova. He's controlling the puppet, at this part. The, the puppet master? Yeah, it's a, nah, it's, I, he's in a guy's clothing. Who else could it be? Like, it's a no, guy. You been, you, no, you <laughs> it's a guy. Look, it's got to be the puppet master. Uh, you would have, you know, you would have been better off with Moon Dragon. That would have been okay. No, Moon I'll Dragon, because, well, then the, Moon Dragon wears the hottest outfits on the planet. They're <laughs> not gonna do that. You know, they're not gonna do that for us anymore. We don't get to see hot chicks. Okay, we're being punished for the rest of our lives. No more hot women in films. We can't get a Lieutenant Aaliyah in this thing. Like that was like, yo, Lieutenant Aaliyah, no hair and <laughs> in the body. Look at that. How did that work out? You know she's just over, but, but um, I'm I'm not anything to get rid of um Cassandra. We're not getting we're not getting any of it. We're getting none of it. Well, well, um, that's all the the other hard part is I don't really like. I mean, with Deadpool doing stuff, I don't really like Wolverine kind of this all in one character. Like he feels like I'm okay with him going to Japan. We care with him going to past stories, but kind of turning them into this, you know, basically like a Marvel character like Captain America, where you do time travel stories and you do this type of stories. I think with Wolverine being feral, you shouldn't really have, if he's in space, you should have some signs that his, you know, he just doesn't like being in these different locations and kind of suggest that this is, you know, this is like you take. Take an animal and put him in, in in the spaceship. He's gonna be like, I can't take this. <laughs> but you know, he became the all-in-one hero, um, the same way most characters like Spider-Man, Batman. You know, even but well, Captain America at least had a connection to the Avengers, so you could see him going into broader areas. But some of these other characters don't really suggest doing that stuff. But at the same time, this is what people want, and this is. You know, I would have said do another Deadpool story because there's, there's already, you know, some interest in Deadpool stuff. They kind of mind it in different ways. But, you know, what can I say? Like, they need a big billion dollar or two billion dollar hit. This will be all will be good in the Marvel. OK, so that would be my last question. Do you think with this doing a billion or two billion, will the fans now feel that Marvel's fixed the mistakes that they seem to still be making? Even though there's still no. things out there. <laughs> no. There's still no. things out there. They're not going to, no, because they'll do this, but then in the same time, they're going to kick themselves in the ass with news. Oh, look, we got the Silver Surfer and her name, Shell Ball. They can't stop themselves. They can't stop. Yeah. So if you're, if you're a troll and these guys, are, these guys know what's going on. These guys are like, all we have to do is just sit back and relax. And we know that you can't stop yourself. Because you're on this train, you got people telling you this is what we need to do, this is what the people want to see, and so you're gonna keep doing it. And yeah, here we are. Okay, so this is in the second part to cheat to make another question. Now, we have we haven't seen the latest Captain America trailer, but how can this trailer be doing that badly when all you need to do is do what is the trailer like ninety seconds? do 80 seconds of whatever this story is and show Harrison Ford. All you're supposed to do is at the end, you see Red Hulk and the audience is supposed to go crazy. Why is, why is going to the, the struggles that, that, that Disney and Marvel is having, why aren't they just showing Red Hulk at the end of this thing and letting people go crazy and say it was the greatest trailer ever? Don't you think that feels like a no brainer to me? Even though I'm not a fan of Red Hulk, or the new Falcon America? They can't get out of their own way. I think the, the probably one of the biggest mistakes that they made was the blip and yeah. not just giving, you know, no, we're just going to bring everybody back and it's going to be from this point because 
one, it's a fictional, it's a fictional universe, so we, it doesn't have to be real. And, you know, but they, they wanted to do the whole, we want real world consequences. If not, it's going to undermine everything. I'm like, no, we still experienced it as the viewer. We mm-hmm. still experienced for us. It's not for them. So we experienced it. And with the understanding that this is a story that has to continue. So they had, they still have a bunch of mess with that whole, well, the five years happened, but then people who disappeared five years ago came back. And what are the complications on that? There's a lot of complications on that, but uh the success also gave them a lot of cushion thinking yeah we can do this stuff you know we know what we're doing and they have made a lot of unforced errors they made a lot of unforced errors that p- started to pigeonhole them uh where you could start you know mar- you could start you know using pejoratives like mcu where they made the race changes they made the gender sw- you know they made the gender switches they uh decided that you know what went on in the comics hey we don't have to be akin to that at all we can do our own we can do our own thing and they they really started going 90 miles an hour uh towards what they believed their audience wanted to the exclusion of the audience that got them there which i i've never seen such a thing before where literally i mean everybody knows you leave with the person who brought you to the dance that's your ride home yeah. <laughs> you know you don't insult that person and these guys said no we're going you know we're going this route where you know, they have these ridiculous notions that the Marvel Universe needs to be 50-50, 50% female superheroes and 50% male heroes. And I was like, okay, I understand if you want to do that, but what's the reason behind it? And if the reason isn't for better storytelling, then maybe you need to think about what, maybe you need to think about that. You know, because these were, the success of the Marvel Universe was not initially because you had a perfect breakdown in terms of gender or a perfect breakdown in terms of race for that matter. It was because of the, the stories that you guys composed yeah. using these particular using these characters and it was a lot of fun the the stuff that they're doing now is very formulaic very you know again like we're, we're checking boxes it you know we're, we're trying to, to test this as to what people want to see they allowed they allowed certain people to get in charge of stories who should never have been in charge of the story without some editorial you know interference but what if i think is probably the best example of what it is because what if you could have told any story that you wanted to and you look at those particular stories and it's only the stories that the showrunner felt they wanted to do and they were just creating all new stuff like hey you know what i'm going to create these characters i like them and then the other ones the, the mcu characters that were a lot of fun the people like those guys became just backdrop you know window dressing at the end of the day so i can tell stories about captain carter uh, a new character I created, and this evil Doctor Strange, and the other things that would have obviously that would have probably made strong what if material. No, we're not really interested in in those particular things. But I'm very interested in the characters that I created, and you, you can see you you can see the the wheels turning on that as well. This stuff over here is kind of stupid and silly. I don't really like that. But the characters I create, they're good. They're good, and they're also my characters. So. If they happen to get popular, get those royalties in. You know, if I was to think that's if I was to think that cynically, but just I mean, that's I think that's pretty emblematic of it. But just a lot of mistakes made, and almost all of them, if not all of them, un, you know, just unforced, just mm-hmm. bad stuff. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know, it's just going over it, and you know, my head, which seemed like some things seemed like they were going to be easy things to do, like um, you know, Secret Invasion, which seemed like it was going to be a straightforward spy thing, but then they were like, no, we're going to go way further into the Cold War spy stuff, but we're going to have a lot of talking, like, <laughs> like, yo, like, y'all don't need to, I understand that, I understand that um, Feige doesn't want a connection to the regular S.H.I.E.L.D. series, but that would be the easiest way to have your cannon fodder, having some of these guys running around and um, being scrolls. And then, but they, you know, ultimately they left it. So the only person that was a scroll was um, that major one was Rhodey. And somehow they allowed the fans to be like, how could you make Rhodey a scroll? How could this happen? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. It's like, well, you know. I don't know that Rudy did anything, um, but it seems like stuff on the horizon 
if if the armor wars camp isn't good, I don't know what they could do right. If, I mean, this is too easy to do. So you know, it's more Ryan Reynolds and everything that was going on in Deadpool it has all the supporting characters and Hugh Jackman, and it has the Back to the Future Two stuff that they can fall back on, so they can always have a scene where they run into someone from the other movie and have a moment where people cheer and they see Captain America's, you know, start talking about Captain America's body. You're not going to make me say it, world. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing your games, you know. And at the same time, oh, this is just nothing to do with anything, right? All right, we're going to close this one out. This don't relate to that. But um, any other words? I'm trying to remember, there's a... There's a genre for that type of story with Armor Wars. I don't know if it's like, um, or if it's a trophy, like Gotta Catch Them All, that type of stuff. I can't remember. But that's such a paint by the numbers type of story mm -hmm. that you really, like you said, you should not have a problem executing that. And I have every confidence that they will. <laughs> because, you know, I, I was talking about this with Mars, where mm -hmm. these guys are trying to make money. And used to be, well, we're going to try to make money by making certain that we produce really good stories, high quality stuff that is going to appeal to people's sensibilities. And that's how we're going to get them. And that switched off to we got to make certain we check these boxes. We got to make certain we have this type of character. This has needs to happen. We have this story beat. We have this. And see, that's going to get you into trouble very quickly because people, it doesn't take very long for people to recognize that. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take, you know, it, it doesn't. It's like where people are like, oh, yeah, Superman, you know, he changes in a phone booth and then he goes out and flies. And in the comic, that never happened. <laughs> you, you'd you be hard pressed to find a comic where Superman actually ran into a phone booth. But then, you know, but people believe that's what the what the case is. And it becomes really hard to break them out of that. So once you get into that and like, oh, the Marvel movies are just like this. This happens, this happens, that happens. You, you pigeonhole yourself and then you really have to work hard to get out of that. And they were never there in the first place. But now, I mean, the the the, the fact, I mean, Shala Ball was such an unforced error. Yeah, it's such an unforced error. It's like, okay, you want to have a female Herald of Galactus? Well, you got at least two. You got at least two that I, uh, you know, that that I know of. Maybe there's even a third. But Shala Balls is the Silver Surface love interest. No, we don't want any, you don't want, want to do that to anymore. We don't want to do, have the female and they're just a love interest. Okay, but why are you making the love interest? Why are you making the love interest whose whole history is her connection to Norrin Rad, who is the Silver Surfer? Why is she getting the nod as opposed to, say, Nova, you know, who, you know, everybody, most people even remember her as a herald, as a herald of Galactic. Why her, you know, over, say, Nova at the end of the day? There's no reasoning for it. You know, there's no logical reasoning for it at the end of the day. They just let these guys come in here. And I think the original, I think the people they were working with had, like, who was it? Like someone like Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh's not going to come and direct the film and just say, oh, it's a superhero thing, so it's, I'm going to make it stupid. He's like, no, I'm going to, how do I make this work? You know, with the sensibilities yeah. that I have a director. And he's also going to read, he will sit down and read a comic book. You know, he will sit down and read a comic. He's like, I'm not going to, I'm not saying that he, he did, but he would do that if he felt, look, I need to do this in order to understand where this character is coming from. And, you know, the, when he went with Thor, he was, well, Kenneth Brown loved Shakespeare. So he was definitely going with the whole Shakespearean angle. And mm -hmm. you could see that, you know, within the stories. So, you know, now with this stuff, you know, I have no idea who the driving force is, but they will take something as simple as like a gotta catch, gotta catch them all storyline with Rhodey in Armor Wars. And they'll turn that into, you know, they'll, they'll turn that into fodder for every single troll machine on YouTube. <laughs> well, that's well, the other thing is that there's so many projects that are, I mean, rightfully so. Ironheart being shelved. I think there's a bunch of other things that they had that were shot and done that they just like, we can't have another TV episode show that sucks even though this was the whole streaming plan to have something else going on. And then you're like, we don't even know if we can put out the Al Acolyte now. Now we're in such bad straits with people that people are hating this stuff. And it's uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, you had a formula. If, if the formula of the early, the first three, where Captain America was less so because Captain America was the 
you know, he was kind of a David who kind of becomes Goliath, but he has the heart, the heart of the lion type of deal. The only problem was that we didn't get more of the, the Red Skull. And it's kind of, kind of tough because we didn't get any really powerful Red Skull scenes because, you know, the Red Skull is this nobody that becomes like the symbol of the Nazis, this big symbol. And at the same time, he, whatever lowly person he was, you know, he's this cultured villain. Like he's not in the same way a royal like Dr. Doom, but he thinks of himself as being more like there's so many curvy scenes where he feels himself as a, a philosopher. The early stuff with how when Stan was writing it and Stan had him doing, you know, changing the draw picture where you see guy off panel where the, <laughs> he's shoot, clearly killing somebody, but you don't see the guy on panel and Stan has a line that says, and, and Hitler says, why didn't you kill him? Um, the skull is like, no, if he fears you now, he'll be even worse, you know, he'll be even more scared that I let him live. And it's just like, they're just adding so much stuff to this character and we didn't get to see that. So, but they had successful Captain America movies. I can't fault them for that because all of the stuff you know, led to successful movies. There's some window dressing. Oh, I, I, I can fault them for it. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> I didn't say it was success-wise. They were still successful, okay. but you're right. Yes, yes. Step, well, just, you know, step aside, my friend. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, think about it. Think about it, though. What if the Red Skull had been utilized? As, I, I, I could see them getting rid of the Red Skull because they were like, you know what? This guy's a Nazi. You know, do we want to yeah. keep using him? We could get in trouble. So we just have them over here. But if they said, no, 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 we can keep, Marvel's been able to use him successfully all these years, <laughs> and he's a Nazi, we should be able to utilize him as well because there's a lot of great stories with the Red Skull. Yes. You know, there's a lot of great stories involving the Red Skull. And then, you know, if you're paying attention, if you just do a little bit of investigation into Captain America, it's like, wait a minute, this, is, this guy is his most prominent villain. This is the villain who always seems to take this guy to the limit. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get rid of him just so he can make a cameo later on, you know, talking about, oh, well, you know, if you want to get the, the you want to get the Infinity uh, Gem, yeah, it's, the stone, it's over there. You know, that's how it is. You know, he's not supposed to be there for just a cheer moment because of a cameo. This is somebody who is, I, I mean, well, he's very significant to Captain, you know, to Captain America's history. And you want to utilize that. So that in itself, that's a mistake. Yeah. Okay. That's a mistake. The fact that they didn't have to really pay out of nowhere for that okay but now since you got uh sam wilson as the falcon oh my goodness the, you, do you know the amount of traction they could have had out of sam fighting a, a nazi you know how much traction they could have got out of the whole thing as opposed Whoa. to you know well we're gonna we're gonna no he's not he's gonna fight the worst enemy he's gonna fight the united states government they're worse than a nazi <laughs> <laughs> you know, well you know, like you know, so that's that's the short sightedness mm -hmm. that they may have had in the early that they may have had in the early days. And you know, the Red Skull fell out of a plane, so that's always you know. Or he, what did he did he fall out of the plane, or did the plane explode? I can't remember exactly what it was, but that's like the classic Disney uh, villain death where you fall, so you can always come back. The Joker falls every time, and he always somehow is able to make it back. I guess not so much for the Red Skull, but you know, they didn't pay for that because. One, people didn't have a lot of connection to the character to begin with, and then two, they introduced, you know, a more compelling, a more compelling villain, if you will, in terms of the uh, the Winter Soldier. So they got, you know, so they got away with it. But, you know, in hindsight, when you look back, that's a character that you could really utilize right now. That's a character that could save your butt right now with all the stuff that you've got going on. But, you know, hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty, and the past is immutable. Well, that's the other thing is that. What if you were, you know, you were going to, and this is staying in, because if, you know, even if it seems like it doesn't connect, this is kind of the end of the old, try to figure out the new with the t TVA and Deadpool and Wolverine, so they're going to fix everything for whatever the new timeline is. The thing is, what if you started this timeline and you see, you know, is it, um, you see like someone who looks like you see the actor you know steve evans is chris evans walking around as a government official in this new thing where you can actually have chris evans be the skull because that was the whole mark grunwald he utilized the kirby idea that they were gonna 
put the put what's the name? They're gonna put um the, they're gonna put Hitler's brain into an Aryan body, which Aryan looking person, which was Captain America. And I was like, as a kid, I was like, wow, that that's crazy. That's great. And then I was real worried that they were gonna actually be successful. Oh, we were- and we read the same storyline. I was like, no. <laughs> then, like, no, you can't you can't do that to Cap. Nobody's ever gonna trust him again. Yeah. These people are cruel. What are you doing? But then they then uh, Mark Grunwald was like, let me um re ring, you know, like um bring back the put the what's the name? Put all the memories of the skull into this new uh, Captain uh, Steve Rogers type body. And he said, This is what you've done what you done with the with the with the Fuhrer. And he's like, hey, so put this, put here's your mask. He's like, there's no time for that mask now. There's a new time for it. We could have Chris Evans running around here and the audience would lose it. He could be a like a like he could be almost the um Thanos of this time, but then it realizes that he's actually playing the red skull. And then you've got your tie-in. These are cheap, these are cheap fixes, guys. This is not big stuff. <laughs> you don't. You, Chris Evans can do whatever movie he wants. I know he doesn't want to do musical theater, but you can bring him back as someone who's big and looming behind the scenes, and he's got a, this long cigarette. You know, that, he wouldn't have a long cigarette because that probably wouldn't work. Cigarette, the cigarette holder. No, yeah. see, that's the thing, though. <laughs> no, that's the thing, though. Do it. <laughs> do it because the same the same stuff that everybody thinks is so corny or so outdated you do it and all of a sudden everybody's like oh wow didn't he look cool with the cigarette hole? It's, the, it's the story it's the story yeah. if you if you come in and you start panning your own stuff as ah look at those idiots running around in yellow spandex then why should anybody else take it seriously mm-hmm. okay the whole and again richard donner cemented this with the superman movie people do not have to believe it's real they just have to believe in the world that you're creating yeah. that's it you know go ahead and do this stuff. how is it that we read this stuff for kids and we never had any problem with it we would be the one like hey are we sure that's the skull where's his cigarette holder mm-hmm. <laughs> the skull would never be so undignified as to hold a cigarette in his fingers you know no those are but those were staples of the character that was a look and, and branding and expectations that you would have, but you also knew that when you saw that type of stuff, it was going to be good. You knew it was going to be good because it had already been crafted, and you, you, it was, it was like the seal of approval that let you know, okay, yeah, yeah, this is going to be the skull. He's doing everything that he's supposed to. And the same thing when you see Steve Rogers, or rather that a uh, body that was created to look like Steve Rogers, and he's there and he's got the cigarette holder and he's smoking, you're like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! At the end of the day, yeah. you know, so that's where you, that's where you come in with it. But hey, you know what? We're, we're talking about Captain America. And this was supposed to be about Deadpool. So I, I, I guess we're into another show. Hey guys, <laughs> thanks for thanks for cooling out with us. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, it's um, you know, well, depends on see what happens comes on after this. But you know, you don't you have an easy out with your Deadpool Wolverine. It should get you the numbers you want. It should do the same, if not better, than the last Spider-Man movie. Because you're dealing with the same kind of subject matter, but different and even more reverent. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But no, we don't see. We know it's going to be a. There's no chance this is not going to be a success with all of the bad failures. But then it's a testament to say, were you doing what you were doing? Because this is more Fox than it was Marvel. Are you doing the right thing in what you've been doing, or you need to get back to these more, you know, I don't want to, don't make me have to say go back because you couldn't figure out how to do the the female action hero. You got to go back to the guy stuff like you guys didn't figure out how to do it. And now you got a good a couple of guy movies that are, you know, you got the Spider Man that, that sold like crazy. You had the Doctor Strange that did well, even though. You know, it had its issues, and you have this that's going to be big and huge for you. So, what can you do? This is kind of testament to what you should be doing. And I don't want to lose the female action movie, but if you keep doing what you've been doing, even though the last Captain Marvel, they had its issues, but anyway. But anyway, um, any other last words? We're going to close this thing out finally after all this time. Any last words? Not a one. Spinner Rack. We're out. Out.